Help! Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Oh, gosh, I hate shopping. Have I ever told you that? Uh, tell me what? How much I hate shopping. Huh? Oh, no. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Why shouldn't I be? Well, I don't know. When I when I left you before this morning, you seemed so energized. You were going to look for work in the paper, and now... Um, I've just been thinking about doing some decorating. Decorating? <laughs> Mary Lynn, do you know what you need? You need something totally frivolous to get your mind off all your problems. Like a birthday party. <clears throat> Bert, Mom, it's not my birthday. Well, of course I know it's not your birthday. It's Tom's birthday. Why do you think I went shopping and got all these kinds of things? Let me show you some of these things. I have everything from smoked oysters to a golf sweater. Now, did you get him something? <clears throat> no, I didn't. I completely forgot. Court, I'm so sorry that I'm the reason that you weren't there to accept your award in person. Sorry? Look, Tina, I was really looking forward to going to this awards bank with, with Sarah. But when you came in with my son, who, who I haven't seen in his whole life, I, I didn't want to do anything but just stay home and play with that little kid. Well, if you really want to play with him, he's upstairs right now, and I'm sure he's awake, and he's just waiting for his daddy to come by and say, well, boy, this is. Oh, well, I, I plan on doing that, but there is something I'd like to talk to you about first, and it does concern our son's future. Uh... I think that's my cue to make myself scarce. Oh, no, no, Sarah, I mean, I mean you can stay here. I, in fact, I kind of like your opinion. I think if it concerns your son, it's strictly an issue between mother and father. So if you don't mind, I think I'll go up to the nursery and say good morning to Melanie. Oh, I think that's great. I think Kim would love the company. So just stay there as long as you'd like. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. You really have come to uh, rely on her judgment, haven't you? How do you mean? Well, I mean, she accepted your award for you, and just now you asked her for her opinion about our son. Yeah, yeah, that's because Sarah's incredible. She's got this rare objectivity, you know? She never lets her emotions cloud her judgment at all. Ah, not like someone else you know, huh? Come on, Tina, that wasn't any kind of a backhand slam. Listen, you and Sarah are, are like, totally different, believe me. Maybe we're not as different as you think. What does that mean? Nothing. Thought you wanted to talk to me about Milagro. Yeah, yeah, I do. I know he is really a beautiful kid. And I'm not just saying that because he's mine. Oh, yeah, well, you don't know how happy this makes me feel that you love him just like I do. You know, I wouldn't change a hair on his head. Uh, but there is something that I, I kind of would like to change. You know, Milagro is, is a wonderful name, and I think it's very symbolic of, of his life so far. I mean, going over the fall, surviving that, surviving the jungle. I mean, it's a miracle that you could even bring him back here so we could hold him in our arms and have him in our lives. But the thing is, I, I mean, when he's growing up here in America, uh, I mean, he's going to be out there on, on the ball field with a bunch of kids, and he's going to have a handle like Milagro. And I've uh, been thinking the same thing. So then you wouldn't mind if we wanted to change his name? No, not if we find something that suits him just as well as Milagro. Funny you should say that, because uh, I've had a name in mind, one that really makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I, if you hate it, we don't have to go ahead with it, but, but the name I was thinking of... Is Clint. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Court, when are you going to learn that you and I are always on the same wavelength? Besides, I think that's a great way to have our new son join his new family. Yeah. Yeah, I know that... Clint would just be tickled knowing that he had a grandson named after him. Oh, boy, and Vicky and the kids. When they find out th that we found the baby and that we brought him back here and, and that now he's going to be Clint's namesake, I it's just going to be like we're bringing the whole family back together again after everything that's happened to us. Oh, Court, that's exactly what I want, too. I mean, all of us have been just driven so far apart. And if little, Mila if little Clint <laughs> can bring us all together, then he really is the miracle child. Listen, Tina, I haven't really said this yet, but if I live to be a hundred years old, I'm never going to be able to thank you enough for going out there and risking your life to bring our baby back home. <laughs> thank you. Morning, sweetheart. Oh, honey, you'll never guess what we've just done. The mind boggles. Hey, Max, how you doing? I guess what Tina is referring to is that we have decided to change little Milagro's name. He is now going to be known as Clint Roberts. You approve, don't you? Approve? I think it's terrific. And since you've been busy all morning making plans, I think it's only fair I share my plans with you. Or should I say our plans? Oh, excuse me. I think that's my cue to go upstairs and uh, change a few diapers or something, if you two will excuse me. Well, honey, I have a great idea. Why don't we all go upstairs and play with the baby? We are not leaving this room. 
Not until we set a date for our wedding. Marshall Seymour. Max, the, the whole reason I wanted to be married in Landview was so that I could share the ceremony with my family and friends, and especially my sister. So? Well, so when we came back here and found out that Vicky and the kids were gone, well, I just think we should wait till they return. Tina, we don't know how long that's going to take. Well, it's not going to take forever. And, and I want to have uh, her to take part in this whole ceremony so she can get her mind off her grief with Clinton. If we hurry it up before she gets back, well, then we're going to take away this, this wonderful chance for her to have some joy that she needs right now. What about what we need? Just what excuse are you going to come up with next, huh? Look, it's not an excuse. Just think of everything that has happened to us lately. I mean, first we find the baby, then, then Clint dies, and, and now Vicky is gone. All the more reason for us to get a little stability in our life. Unless that's not what you really want. Honey, I love you. I want to marry you. And if you don't believe me, just ask Karen. Karen, what the hell would I have? What the hell's a butler got to do with this? Well, because I was already talking with him earlier about, about catering companies and for him to check them out because I want to get you the best deal. I want everything to be the best for us, honey. Did you really start planning this? Yes. Look, I am just as serious about this as you are. Maybe. This is one case where I wish you weren't so serious. I like the old Tina, how she'd follow her heart and plunge into things. Yeah, and she always regretted it later. Besides, I'm not the same now. I'm a mother. I have, I have responsibilities. I have responsibilities to my son and to my family and to my sister. You forgot your fiancé. Honey, you know what I meant. I don't care what you mean. It's obvious I'm just an afterthought in your life. Well, I'm sorry, Tina. That's not good enough. Not for me. Wait, Max, where are you going? I, I'm trying real hard to understand you. I just got to go let off some steam. Max, no, wait, wait, wait. You can't go off like this. Look, why don't we just go up and play with the baby? No, thanks. It's already too crowded up there. Yes, this is Bennett Landon. May I speak with Victoria Buchanan, please? Oh, hi, Mr. Landon. This is uh, Tina, Vicky's sister. Oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Roberts. We met before at Landfair. Uh, yes, I remember. Is this about some sort of legal business? Well, yes. Uh, since I'm Vicky's attorney, I do have some important matters to discuss with her. Oh, I'm sorry, but she's not here. Vicky and the kids went up to the mountain cabin to get away. Oh, I understand, but she will be home soon, I trust. Well, frankly, I really don't know. I mean, I haven't even been able to tell her that I'm here, but... What, is there some sort of problem? No, no problem. Just a very important formality, the reading of Clint's will. Now, Vicky mentioned that Clint had a copy of his will locked in the desk, and... Well, I just wanted her to check to make sure that it was the latest version that Clint and I drafted together after he went blind. Oh, well, as Clint's sister-in-law, and Vicky trusted me with the key, I'd be happy to look for you. Well, I appreciate your oh, it's offer. it's no problem. Just hold on. Okay, let me see. I've got insurance. Birth certificates. Mr. Landon. All right. Would you read the date of the document? Um, yeah. Hold on just a second here. Okay. Uh, December 7th, 1987. Does that sound right? Yes, that's the same date as my copy, which means that Clint didn't have it altered before he died. Thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Oh, and make sure that you lock it back up. We don't want anyone to read it until the appointed day, do we? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, this is his private legacy. No one will read it until you get a chance to read it to everyone. Good. I'll get back to you on the exact day and time. Till then, thanks again, Mrs. Roberts. Oh, happy to be of help. <laughs> being of sound mind and body. My hat's off to you, sir. I'd be gloating, too, if I predicted a blizzard the day before it happened. Got your attention, did it? 
<laughs> well, actually, it's nothing to it. Not for a fellow who's on such intimate terms with the future. <laughs> Still claiming to be from another time. <laughs> well, uh, you might ask your betting friends about it if you don't believe me. Uh, I believe you, but I believe you are a confidence man of the highest level. It only makes me more eager to go into business with you. You see, with my salesman ability and your ability to prognosticate, we could become as rich as passes. Boxing matches, elections, even natural disasters. We could wager and win them all. <laughs> I like the way you think. I like the way you think. But what's to keep you from fleecing me the way you fleece the rest of the sheep? Well, sir, how am I sure that you just didn't get lucky with your last prediction? Hmm. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Today happens to be the running of the first annual Apache Rock horse race. Oh, I've heard about that, boss. Uh, a bunch of cowboys are going to race 100 miles. <laughs> and I suppose Mr. Buchanan is going to tell us who's going to win? Well, the fellow's name just happens to be Jim Mackinac. Mm. And his horse came in with only three shoes. Oh, pretty cocky, aren't you? No, pretty accurate. You want to uh, test that prediction? Duncan, hurry right over to the telegraph office. And, Duncan, when the results come in, please hurry back. You got it, boss. Should have had him place a bet while you were at it. Been the easiest money he ever made. Maybe. But maybe the money is just a little bit too easy. Before I decide to go in a... The business with you. I would like to have a conference with my lovely Desdemona. Sure, sure. I'll step outside. You can confer till your heart's content. No need, no need. Just make yourself at home. Desdemona, would you care to join me outside? Oh, of course, Mr. Jones. What do you say? <laughs> I don't know about it. Keep your voice down. Okay. I don't think I trust him. Then again, if he can predict a few horse races, we can ride him all the way to the bank. Hmm, my feeling, exactly. But if he becomes a little bit too troublesome, uh, we'll just have to silence him for good. in it for me. I get somebody else to help cook a meal for a change. One of the Don't make such a big deal out of it. I forget these things all the time. My father's birthday, I've never forgotten it before. It's no big deal. Look, you know what we'll do? I'll let you pick one of these presents that I was going to give for Tom. We'll say it's from you. What do you want? You want the, uh, hey, how about the golf sweater? He loves golf. I remember that. See, you haven't been around him in years, and you still remember his hobbies. I can't even remember what day it is. Mary Lynn, would you stop being so hard on yourself? You just had a lot on your mind lately. <sighs> Mom, thanks for letting me claim the golf sweater. I'm sure Dad will love it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I hope so. We have been having so many harsh words lately. All I want is to have fun tonight. Now, are you going to be there? I wouldn't miss it. Okay, okay, that's more like it. You see, I think I'm optimistic by nature, and I expect you to be exactly the same way. Oh. So, uh, what? What'd you get? You found some good jobs here? Um, well, no, that's not exactly what I was looking at. What's this? If my grandson Milagro is found to exist, I leave him in trust to be established by my wife a sum to provide for his education, not just as a scholar, but as a young man born of ranchers. Even though I'll never know you, Milagro, I want you to know me and the kind of family you come from. Finally, I instruct an endowment for Sarah Gordon to establish a school for the blind in Landview. My hope is that this project will not only provide her with a worthy outlet for her talents, it will keep her close to our family, a family that has come to depend on her help and that has accepted her as one of our own. A school for the blind? If she sees this, she'll never go to Greece. Well, that means she'll stay forever. Must be very fascinating reading. What is it, team? After due consideration with my lovely associate, I'd be happy to entertain a partnership. Well, that's very gracious of you, considering it's going to be my talent that you're exploiting. <laughs> Let's just say we're going to be exploiting each other's talent. That is, if your prediction about the 100-mile race proves to be accurate. Well, that's easy enough to check. But, you know, uh, 
Mr. Jones, uh, may I call you Julius? Oh, absolutely. Well, right from the get-go, I have been up front with you, and now I kind of think it's your turn. I don't believe I follow you, sir. Well, you, uh, you paid Mayor McGillis $1,000 cash money for a worthless strip of land on the north end of town. I'd like to know why. Oh, well, that's no mystery. I simply represented the Western Railway Company, and we purchased the land. No, 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 no. We both know there's no such thing as the Western Rail Company. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Jones happens to be the uh, largest holder. Desdemona, thank you, thank you for rushing to my rescue, but... I'm afraid Mr. Buchanan is a little bit too sharp for our little ruse. Julius. It's all right, Desdemona, if we're going to be going into partnership with Mr. Buchanan. Ah, Clint. <laughs> he has a right to know what we're up to. You see, the fools in this town always look at what's on the surface. And if they see railroad tracks, they think of prosperity. But I look below the surface, deep underground, beneath that very strip of land. And do you know what I see? What? Gold. Gold in Buchanan City? <laughs> you must be joking. Uh, no joke. I heard it from the dying lips of an old prospector. <laughs> yes, ready to meet his, meet his maker. He, he was not about to lie. All I knew was that I had to get to Buchanan City and acquire that land, and my fortune would be made, a fortune that we all can share. What do you have to say to that? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Look, you don't you laugh at Julius now. He is offering you a golden opportunity. Oh, it's golden, all right, like in fool's gold. <laughs> Confounded, what's so golden funny? Uh, you, Mr. Jones. You, being from the future, I know a little bit about Western history. And one of the funniest episodes on record is the fool's gold rush of 1888. <laughs> Julius, that is now. I know what year it is. <laughs> You see, it seems that this medicine man filed a claim and started digging for gold. Well, he got a lot of investors, and they dug right along with him. Fool's gold fever swept the territory. Mm. But you know what? The only thing was, all they found down there was more dirt and more rock. <clears throat> so it was really no surprise when in 1888, 1889, January, I think it was, the medicine man is... The medicine man is what? Nothing, Mr. Jones, nothing. It's, uh, it's not fair. I'm from the future, but it's, it's your present. It's your life, and you should be allowed to live it out. To live it out? But, but what happened? What, what, what happened in January of 1889? The medicine man is shot to death by an angry prospector. <clears throat> Oh, Julius, don't believe him. He is just trying to scare you out of the land. Well, he's doing a hell of a job of it. Uh, ten months to live? A little less. Uh, oh, well, and for what? For a, a mine of iron pyrite? I've got to sell that land. Julius. He's been right about all of his other predictions. I am not about to wager away my life. Mr. Jones, there is one solution. You could go to Mayor McGillis, tell him the deal is off, get your money back, and put it in something safe. Safe? Safe. What could be more safe than gold? Julius, my friend, I have one word for you. Yes. Plastics. Plastic? Plastic. You never heard of it? No. Of course you never heard of it. It was the richest and most exciting discovery of the 20th century, but you're in 1888. I don't know about this, Julius. Hush, hush. Uh, uh, where would a body find this plastic? Well, I just happen to know of an abandoned silver mine outside of Tucson. Now, the group of prospectors who started it abandoned it took off. The fools, they didn't realize that in 1890, they were going to discover the richest, most valuable vein, mother load of plastics ever discovered. Did you hear that, Des? Mother load. What exactly does this plastic do? 
What does plastic do? What doesn't it do? What doesn't it do? Well, what is gold is good for jewelry, for money, for teeth. But plastic, plastic is universal. Universal, I like that. But, 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 but could you give us an example? I'll show you some right here. All right, take a look at this. Huh? Yeah. Clear oh. like glass. You can see through it, right? Good grief. Watch. <gasps> it didn't break. Doesn't break. Doesn't break. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine, Des, what we could do with this stuff? Julius, in your wildest dreams, you can't imagine what you can do with plastic. What can be done with plastic? The man who discovers plastic will be a million... No, a multi-billionaire. By thunder, that settles it. To hell with gold. Gold is lead compared to plastic. Yes, yes, yes. get packing. I'm going to the mayor's office and get back our cash, and, and then we're going to leave this hick town and go straight to Tucson and buy that plastic mine. That's it, Julius. That's the spirit. That is the spirit. But first... Why don't you let me have the deed to the land, and I'll go to, to the mayor, get back the money for you. Thanks, friend. I'm forever in your debt. You saved my fortune and my life all at the same time. Wait a minute. I never get this excited about anything. I usually get other people excited, and then... You wouldn't be conning me now, would you? You don't want to get rich? Fine, fine, fine by me. I'll send flowers to your funeral. Daisies are nice. Boss, boss, Mr. Jones, it happened just like he said it would. What? The hundred mile race. Oh, slow down, Duncan, and speak English. They announced the winner, Jim Mackinaw. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna say I told you so, but just to keep you from thinking that it might be totally a lucky break on my part, wasn't Mr. Mackinaw's horse minus one shoe when he came in? <laughs> yep. Here's the deed. You get the cash from the mayor, and I promise you a, a fair shake with the mine. I'll be back in two shapes of some lamb steak. Here's your hat, sir. Oh, the, well, uh, hell, what the hell's this? Uh, There's nothing, nothing Julius, at all. Julius, you... Let me see it. What is this? Duncan, the door. You're not leaving here, my friend until you tell us what this contraption is for. I don't know, Sarah. I got a little practice with this kind of thing with little Al. But somehow with this guy, it's just so much different. I feel so relaxed and at ease with him. I just like, love holding him. He's a lucky little kid, Corey. Yeah. More ways than one. Well, I think we are all real lucky just to have him here back with us again. Well, it wasn't just luck that brought him back. Tina risked her life to bring him. You must be very grateful to Tina. I tell you, grateful just doesn't cover it. So, uh, have you decided how you're going to handle the custody arrangement? Well, obviously, I, I want to do everything I can for this little fellow now. And considering the separation we've already had, I think the best thing for him is to be with Mommy for a little while. I know that Max is going to be a fine stepfather. And as long as I get to see little Clint whenever I want to, That'll be just fine with me. We can even come over to my house, be the boys' night out some nights, huh? <laughs> well, knowing Tina, she's going to want you to see your son as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah, she's real good about that kind of thing. Look what we got over here, huh? She seems very concerned about your feelings. Yeah, she is. You seem pretty concerned, too. Listen, Sarah, I, I really appreciate the fact, and so does Clint, that you didn't take off for Greece right away. I have not said that I wasn't taking that job yet. I just told Mr. Dinakos that I needed a little more time to assess my prospects here in Landview. Well, let's hope those prospects pan out a little bit, huh? <laughs> you know, uh, it'd be nice if you got a therapy job uh, very similar to the one that Mr. Dinakos is offering you in Greece, but it would be a little closer to home. Little Clint would like that, too, wouldn't you? Hmm? I'd like that, too. I'm so happy you came back. Oh, honey, it was all my fault. Hold it. That's my line. I'm the one that stomped out of here, me and my stubborn pride. I didn't even give you one day back in town to enjoy your baby without trying to compete. Oh, honey, you don't have to compete for my attention. You know that. I want to marry you. I'm not delaying it. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Yeah, I want that, too. But we can't always get what we want with a snap of our fingers. Sometimes we have to compromise. Like I tell you I'm sorry, and you tell me what you were reading. Oh, it's 
nothing, really, honey. I want to talk about the caterers, okay? You know what I think? Looks like a legal it. document to me, Tina. Well, yeah, I was just going to put it in the drawer and lock it up. In fact, I'll uh, just do that right now. Okay, good. <laughs> the last will and testament of Clint Buchanan. Well, I wasn't reading it. Vicky's lawyer asked me to just make sure it was still here, and that's what I was doing, and then I was going to put it away. Look, you're not supposed to be reading that. Neither were you. There must be some very interesting details in here. Really, I didn't see anything like that. All I saw was that Clint left for little Clint Jr. a nice trust fund for his schooling. In fact, I thought that was very nice of his grandfather. I never knew Clint cared that much, but... Hmm. You're angry, aren't you? What? Because you flagrantly disregard your family's privacy? A little ticked off, but... Actually, I'm kind of glad to see that motherhood hasn't changed the old Tina too much. You know, you're the only man I've ever known who really understood me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love you so much. <laughs> hey, hold off on the hug. You put this right back where you found it. The rest of the family may not be quite so understanding. All right, then. I will. Mm -hmm. See? Watch. Just put it right in here. And lock it right up. Right. There. Now, no one will see it until the lawyer wants to read it to everybody. Now, give me a kiss, and I'll be off. Where are you going? You want to get married, don't you? Someone's got to pay for that caterer. I'll be at the hotel if you need me. Max? Hmm? I do need you. I hope you know that. I'll always need you. Almost as much as he needs me. So, concrete proof. You and Wade are really going to move in together. Mom, you make it sound like we're a couple of kids sneaking off in the middle of the night. Wade and I made a mature decision. Yeah, well, there are ramifications to mature decisions, too, Mary Lynn. I mean, something you don't even expect. If you're worried about things like how we're going to pay the rent or where we're going to find furniture to fill up no, the No, 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 it's not that. It... So, well, I guess I'm uh, just going to have to face reality. Reality? What reality? Well, if you move in with Wade, I'm going to have to move out of here. Why? This is your home now. You belong here just as much as anyone. Okay, Mary Lynn, look, let's not be naive about this. If you move out of here, things are going to change. I mean, I can't live here alone with Tom when he blames me for, for you moving in with Wade. Mom, I will be sure and tell him that it was my decision. Well, honey, thank you, but that's not going to make much of a difference. If Tom is angry, it might subside, but still he's not going to trust me. All the time he's going to think that I'm a wedge between you and him. I, I can't live like that. Well, the last thing I want is to cause friction between you and Dad. If there's something that I can do... No, then... no, really. Look, you, you just have to live your life the way you want to. And uh, the rest of us are, uh, well, we're just going to have to adjust. How good to see you again, Mrs. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Nakas. Please sit down. Thank you. Uh, look, I'm here because I wanted to talk about Sarah. She's reached her decision? Uh, no, I'm afraid she hasn't. In fact, that's why I wanted to come over here and talk to you in person. I, I hope this will be private, you know, just between you and me. I'll be the soul of discretion. Good. Look, I like to think of myself as one of Sarah's closest friends. And myself and all her other friends, well, we just feel terrible about her passing up this wonderful opportunity. I mean, she says her friends need her, and we do. Believe me, we do. It's just that, well, we hate to to stand in the way of this, this challenge to a career. That's very selfless of you, Mrs. Roberts. Have you conveyed these feelings to Sarah? Yes, I have, but you know how stubborn she can be. That's why I came up with this idea. Now, I know I've tried to convince her, and you've tried to convince her. And what I was thinking is that maybe you could bring your daughter, Elena, to the States. Elena? What would that accomplish? Well, I think if Sarah met your daughter and she saw what a difference she could make in your daughter's life, that she just... Well, she'd jump at your offer. Mrs. Roberts, it's a brilliant idea. I'll fly Elena over from my island at once. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, Mr. Donakos, thank you. 
I was wondering where I put that. Thanks for finding it for me. That's it, Des. Hold on to it until our partner describes its purpose to us. Its purpose? Why didn't you say so, Julius? I brought it along to show you some more plastic. As you can see, the whole thing is made Just out of... leave it be. Hey, take it easy. That happens to be my machine. I thought we were partners, and I thought partners shared and shared alike. You wouldn't understand it. Try me. It's an air purifier. Well, wait a minute. You haven't noticed? All us people in the future, we carry those little air purifiers. Haven't you noticed how clear the air is in here? That little machine is doing it. Don't, don't, don't drop it. Just push the stop button. There, you see? It's not a bomb at all. It's a perfectly harmless little machine. You see, my friend, the fools in this town only look at the surface of things. They see a railroad track, and that means prosperity. But I look below the surface, deep underground, beneath that same strip of land. And you know what I see? Gold. What? City. <laughs> you got a big joke. Here. No joke. I heard it from the dying lips of an old prop. <laughs> what are they going to think of next, huh? <laughs> There's a perfectly simple explanation for what you just heard. Save it. Your being from the future won't help you get me behind bars, but it might just get you killed. Excuse me. Yes? If Hunts came out with a new... Mom, please say you won't move out. This house has finally become a home with you here. Look, Mary Lynn, if you move in with Wade, you're going to have your own home. You have to stop worrying about me and Tom. But I care about both of you. I never meant to drive you two apart. But nobody said you did. But look, we got to face the facts here. You made a choice. You chose to move in with Wade. We all know how Tom's going to react to that, so I might as well look for a place by myself. I'll get that. We're not through talking. I'm going to keep this family together no matter what I have to do. Noon sharp. Hey, look, this, this really Hi. isn't good. Are you going with us? Going where? Uh, like I said, Oh, nowhere. didn't you tell her? Wait. I took a lunch hour so we can go over to Wood Glen Apartments and pick out a new place. Right, honey? What's wrong? Let me put it to you this way, Sal. I'm back, but I can't say for how long, so I'm counting on you to keep things running smooth around here, right down to the extra towels in the bridal suite. Consider it done, Mr. Holden. Thanks. Hmm, I hope that means you'll have more time to spend with me. Whoa, what are you doing here? What, do I need an excuse to come see my fiancé? Aren't you uh, glad to see me? Are you kidding? Come here, lady. Whoa, well, something tells me you missed me. Well, it's been an hour since I've seen you. How's little Clint? No, oh, he's wonderful. Kim was mm -hmm. just getting him his bottle, and I thought that he deserved a break from Mommy and that Mommy deserved a nice lunch with the other favorite male in her life. Oh, well, if he's the only competition, I think I can handle that. And I have just arranged my schedule here at the hotel so I can get off at any time. Oh, that's great! Let's get some menus because I am starved. Tina, I didn't mean get off for lunch. What I'm saying is you set the day and Mr. and Mrs. Max Holden could go on their honeymoon. Mr. Jones, I don't like violence, especially when it's pointed at me. Now, you put that gun away and I'll explain everything to you. I'll... This device explains itself. Desdemona, again. You see, my friend, the fools in this town only look at the surface of things. They see a railroad track, and that means prosperity. But I look below the surface, deep underground, beneath that same strip of land. And you know what I see? Gold. I don't know how. But you captured my voice to capture me. To capture you? Don't be silly. I'm not a lawman. I'm a confidence man, just like you are. No, my friend. You are a dead man. Mr. Jones, you kill me, and you're a fool, because I can make you rich. Rich beyond your wildest dreams.
Mr. Jones, don't you get it? The proof is right there in your lady love's hands. I brought that little device with me from the future. It's called a tape recorder. It preserves words, music, any kind of sound, and then it plays it back for you. If you don't believe me, turn it over and look at the patent dates. I bought it last December, 1987. All right, Des, it won't hurt to humor him before we bid him adieu. Oh, my God. Well, what is it? Come here and What's look wrong? at yourself. <sighs> Boss, I see it, but I don't believe it. Patent 1987. I've been trying to tell you. I'm not out to arrest you. I'm trying to make you a bundle of money, us a bundle of money, but I can't do it by myself. You have to be at least smart enough to grab the opportunity. He's been telling the truth all along, Julius. He really does come from the future. I'm smart enough to know that some things never change, past, present, or future. A double cross is a double cross. All I set out to do was to record your confession, but not for the reason you think. As a man familiar with larceny, Julius, can't you understand that I was trying to protect myself just in case you tried to double-cross me? Oh, I understand. You needed my words on that machine. In case I tried to swindle you, you could threaten me with exposure. Exactly. Where I come from, we call it insurance. Where we come from, it's blackmail. Yes, Desdemona, but at least it's a modus operandi. I understand. Boss, what the hell are you doing? He speaks my language, Duncan. Even if he is from a foreign land. Not foreign. Future. And I can back up every word I've told you. And if you'll ask your associates to leave the room, I'll tell you my biggest secret. How I can travel back and forth through the seamless geography of time. There's nothing wrong, Wade. Uh, Mom and I were just discussing Dad's birthday. We've planned quite a dinner, haven't we? Yeah, we sure have. Oh, I hope what we're doing doesn't ruin the plans. We all want the same thing, don't we, Mom? Well, we sure do, but sometimes you can't get what you want. What's going on? Look, Mary Lynn, I want you to be happy, but I also want Tom to be happy, and I also <laughs> want me to be happy. But uh, let's not talk about this now, because you guys have plans. I want to go over to Herb Callison's. Mom, I have a meeting with him. Mom, please tell me this is not your final word on the subject. What What kind of word? What, someone clue me in. Well, I'll let Mary Lynn tell you. Uh, I'll be home for the party. OK, we'll talk about it then, OK? Yeah, yeah, we will. Hey, do you want to tell me what that's all about? Nothing. It's about us, isn't it? She, she's going to not back us against your father now. Why does it always have to be one side against the other? I mean, why can't we just I'm get sorry, along for I'm a sorry, change? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know just what to show you to get your mind off our troubles. What's that? It's my dad's birthday, not mine. Hey, this isn't all yours. This is for us. Paris. <laughs> That's right. Do you like it? Oh. I love it. It's a great poster, but please don't tell me you're planning a vacation. Oh, no, no, no. It's a lot closer to home than that. I, I saw this on the way over here in an art shop. And I decided that that will look great in our new bedroom, in our new apartment. Every morning we can wake up and look at that thing and realize that our life together is going to be one big adventure. Doesn't matter where we are, Landview or Paris, we'll always be together, right, honey? Marilyn? Honeymoon? But, hey, we already talked about this, this this morning. I thought we discussed it and decided everything. No, you decided. I said the discussion was going to continue unless you were too nervous to talk about our getting married. Nervous? Why would I be nervous? You tell me. Look, I told you the only reason I want to put off the date is so that I have to... So that so can... you can wait for Vicky to come back. You've been trying to get a hold of her since you got back from Venice. We, she's not at the cabin. We don't know how long it's going to be before she ends this trip with the kids. Well, I still think we should wait, and I thought you understood that. I understand. It doesn't mean I'm going to accept it. Listen, Tina, we can't put our entire lives on hold for them. We've got our own needs. I know, and I need to have my sister there when I get married. So I think we should just, just wait for her. I mean, it's very important to me. Tina, we're not going to put this off again. Honey, look, I came here to have a nice 
lunch with you. Now, can't we spend five minutes together and enjoy each other's company without making any plans? I wish you'd called me before you decided to surprise me. Look, I've got already got another lunch commitment. Max, don't be this way. I'm not trying to play games with you. I'm serious. I've got a working lunch in, in 15 minutes. Yeah, well, work comes before me. Oh, hey, listen, I got something. I don't want you to go home empty-handed. I was going to bring this by land fair later on. But since you're here... It's from Vicky. No kidding, really? Why don't you read it? Come on, maybe she says when she's coming back, then we can set our wedding date. <laughs> well, what'd Vicky say? Well, by the time this letter reaches you, I pray you've come back home with your baby. I'm sorry I won't be there to hug you in Milagro. But as I'm sure Coordinesa will tell you, I needed time alone with the children. You'll note there is no return address. It's because I don't know myself where we're headed next. I don't know, Max. That has me really worried. It is not like her to just, just leave without any kind of itinerary. I think that's what she needs most right now. No schedules, no timetables, no obligations. What else does it say? In spite of our loss, or maybe because of it, I know we're going to come back home stronger and closer than ever. If all goes well, we'll be back in time for the reading of the will. Tell Bennett Landon I haven't forgotten the meeting is set for next Saturday, so you can expect us no later than the Friday before. What? Well, that's what I wanted to hear. That's the new... Yeah! Oh, God, I've been waiting for that. What do you mean? What am I doing? It's right there in black and white. You just read it. Our wedding date is Friday. Why? Well, I don't know if we should make such an important decision just like that. Decision? It's decided. Here, let's make it official. What's that? I don't know. What could it be? A gold-plated Kamasutra coffee pot. Uh, Winnebago. No, it's an autographed picture of Smokey Robinson. <laughs> Why don't you just tell me what it is? Why don't you open it up and look inside? Oh, Max, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's the word I thought of when I saw it. I saw it in the window of an antique shop in Venice when I thought we might tie the knot in San Germano. And when things didn't come off, I kept it on me until the perfect moment. Oh, this isn't fair. Mm -hmm. No, you're making this almost impossible for me not to get married next oh, Friday. Oh, lady catches on quick, huh? Well, let me tell you something, too, lady. This is not just your run-of-the-mill engagement ring. No, sorry, Bob. This has a legend attached to it. Well, I should hope so. I mean, what is it? Some uh, lovesick gondolier just plucked it out of the canal? No, it's actually a jealous, a jealous gypsy had it made for his beloved bride. Really? That's the legend. And not only that, whenever she looked at it, when the stone would sparkle in her eyes, she could not help but tell the truth. You wear that ring, Tina. You'll be true to me forever. I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. Let me just slip this on your finger. Right here. Until next Friday when I put a golden band right beside it. You know, you always have been an incurable romantic. <sighs> Max, would you look how that sparkles? Just like your eyes. I wonder if the gypsy le legend is true. Well, let me see. Hmm? I cannot tell a lie. I love Max Holden. Mm -hmm. And I have an idea. Oh, I do, too. Unfortunately, I can't get out of this meeting, so tell you what, I'll get off work as soon as I can. I'll come by to land fair, and we will pick up just where we left off. You got a date. <sighs> Buddy, I made it. I want you to quit running away from me. I need you to help me carry all that stuff out to the buckboard. This is woman's world. Oh, awesome. Besides, I need to go check on Clint. No, you don't. May, you don't understand. Clint needs me. If he needs you so bad, how come he didn't want you tagging along with him to wherever he went, huh? Oh, May. Don't all May me, bud. I need your help today, honey. Well, hello there, Mrs. Vasquez. What can I do for you this fine day? Oh, I need everything. Well, there's my list. All right. Oh, that's quite a list. I need you to take it. They tell me, stage stops right outside. They tell you true, mister. Uh, you headed east? 
St. Louis, and that's a fact. I got a satchel full of orders for anvils from Tucson to Buchanan City. Excuse me, sir. Do you know a woman by the name of Jenny Fletcher? Don't pry, buddy. It's okay, ma'am. Sure, I know Miss Jenny. I just saw her in the hotel lobby paying her bill. I reckon we'll be sharing that coach all the way to Missouri. Oh, I gotta tell Clint. Ah, bud, now I'm gonna tell Papa about this if you leave. Well, Papa, we'll just have to wait to tan my hide. I gotta talk to Clint. I'll meet you back here. All right. We're alone. Where can I find this time machine? Well, now, don't worry, Julius. I have it hidden in a very safe place. And once you and I climb aboard, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Backward in... Backward into the Renaissance period or forward into the Atomic Age? <laughs> Forget about the past. It's over and done with. I'm interested in that Atomic Age, whatever it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, to do it properly, we're going to need a lot of cold, hard cash. And unfortunately, my pockets are empty. <laughs> so are mine. I suppose we'll have to find a less expensive time period. Well, we might not have to do anything quite that drastic. Not if we could convert some of your assets. <laughs> my assets? Who would want to buy a wagon load of snake oil? Well, actually, I was thinking more along the lines of that deed that you bought from Mayor McGillis. You know, the one for that land on the north end of town? I guarantee I can sell it back to these yokels for $1,500. $1,500? I only paid 1000 I know that. But once I get through sweet-talking the mayor, he'll be tickled pink to tack on that extra 500 Julius, don't forget, I eat, drink, and sleep at the mayor's farm. But you don't have anything against turning a small profit, do you? <laughs> Clint, my friend. <laughs> the more I know about you, the more I know that we were destined to be partners. Likewise, Julius. Likewise. Give me the deed, and I'll, uh, I'll go cinch the deal. Oh, not, not. I want to see that time machine right now. Yeah, but we still do have an appointment to see that place. I know we do. But before we go to see the place, tell me what you think it'll be like. Well, it's bound to be small, but there'll be a lot of light because the no, building kind no, of faces... No, 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 I'm not just talking about the apartment. Tell me about our future. Make me see it like you do. Okay. We'll have to start kind of slowly at first, but once we get the apartment looking like we want it, we can take some money and put it into CDs Wait, or... I'm not talking about money or savings accounts. Tell me about dreams. Oh, you're a romantic, huh? Well, we'll travel. Okay. Where? New well, York? Boston? Cleveland? Oh, you have such small dreams. How about Paris? Gr we could go to Greece. Okay. How about India, where we have the Taj Mahal? It was built by a prince for his lost love, you know. Yeah, but there won't be any lost love here. We'll always be together, no matter what, no matter where we go. Our whole life together is going to be like one long safari of love. <laughs> An adventure every day. <laughs> That's right. And we better start the adventure. We don't want to be late. Come on. Let's go. Um, See that apartment. Mary Lynn. Wait, um, it all sounds so wonderful and, uh, I'd like all of our dreams to come true. I really would. But I'm sorry. I can't go. A blacksmith shop? Mm-hmm. You keep the most valuable object in the world here? Relax, Julius. This building isn't used anymore. My time machine couldn't be safer. Is... Yep. This... Imagine... A wagon you can hit directly to the stars. <laughs> I hope that means that you finally believe me. <laughs> Seeing is believing. Let's uncover it so ah, I can... ah. 
we both agreed that we would first stop by Mayor Miguelis's office and sell him the deed back. Confound it. Why are you so obsessed with that land north of town? Not the land, Julius. The $1,500 that we can get for it. Maybe. But I'm not leaving until I can see this time chariot with my own eyes. It's... it's a wagon! Oh. Sorry, Julius, you forced my hand. Ah. Goodbye, Western Rail Company. Hello, Randolph Lord. Clint! I've been looking all over town for you. What happened to him? Well, I just had to uh, teach him a lesson the hard way. What? Well, time travel can be hazardous to your health. I don't understand. I'll explain it to you later. Now, why were you looking for me? It's about Miss Ginny. There's a stagecoach coming to town, and she's planning to be on it. Let's go surprise Mommy. There she is. OK. All right. Excuse me, ma'am. Is uh, this seat taken for a couple of studs? Oh, Gordon, Clint. Hi, honey. What are you two doing here? Well, it was all your son's bright idea. I mean, he said, Pop, I'm just sick and tired of you showing me off in this here park. I miss my mommy. I want to go see her. Well, oh, honey, I miss you, too. Why don't you two have some lunch with me? Oh, Tina, I would love to. Actually, the reason I came by is for a handoff. Just got beat from Briggs. I need to go on a photo assignment. Oh, not out of town, I hope. Uh, not really. It's over at Lantano Mountain. Seems that, uh, whoop, got that? Zach Thomas, not the fork, thank you. <laughs> you take a spoon. Zach Thomas has got this assignment, and uh, he's also got the flu, so they gave it to me instead. Well, you usually love that sort of assignment. Yeah, I usually do. But, uh, I realized how much fun I had playing at the park with my son, watching him laugh at all the squirrels, and it was kind of tough to take, but I had to take it anyway. Um, you know, uh, I get the feeling you're getting kind of fond of your son, Mr. Roberts. Yeah, I am. You know, I used to think that I knew what love was all about. And then I look at this little fella, and it's like a certain part of my heart opens up, a part that I never knew existed. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, though, there are squirrels up on Montana Mountain. Yes, that's true, but I can't do my photo assignment and look out after him at the same time. Well, you could have had another pair of hands. What? You mean you? Oh, look, Tina, that's a very sweet offer, but... No, it's I... purely selfish on my part. It is. I mean, I can play with little Clint here while you do your work, and then we can drive over to Vicky's Mountain Cabin so I can introduce her to Clint. Yeah, but we don't even know that Vicky and the boys are going to be there. Oh, come on, it's only a ten-minute drive from the lodge you're going to be at. I think how great it would be to, to be able to, to show Clint to Vicky and the boys. And if they're not there, then we can leave her a note telling her all about Clint and, uh... Else. Wow. That, that's some ring, Tina. Is it new? Yeah, it is. It's from Max. He got it in Venice. Wow. Tell mommy how pretty that ring is, huh? What's the occasion? Or, or with Max, I guess there doesn't need to be an occasion. <laughs> well, actually, it's an engagement ring. Max and I are getting married next Friday. Oh, next Friday, huh? Well, I know that seems soon and everything. It's just that, you know, Vicky said that she was going to be back in town then, so Max thought that it would be a good time. Yeah. yeah well, look, Tina, you don't have to explain all that to me. Uh, I, I, I just think it's great. You do? Yeah. Yeah, with everything you and Max have been through these last few months, well, I, I think it'll be best for, for both of you if you just, you know, get settled down. Well, that's what I want. For all of us. All of us to be happy. Well, I, I, I don't know what sparkles more, huh, son? Do you? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> what sparkles more, the ring or, or your mama right now? You know, I, I guess there's no harm in you coming up to the mountain with us. That, that would be wonderful. That is, of course, unless Max has got a problem. Well, no, you know, he's so busy with business right now. <laughs> no, honey, why don't... Uh, I'll just leave him a message. He'll understand. So, uh, come on, guys. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, you oh, be okay? Go ahead. We got him. We can take him, huh, <laughs> Oh. What does Irish Spring have more of? 
Uh, <laughs> more shower to refresh you like never before. How about that fragrance? <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything else? Uh, skin conditioners. Irish Spring brings more shower to you. What do you mean you don't want to go? Just a few minutes ago, you said you'd go and look at the apartment with me. What's going on? Wade, I'm sorry. I don't mean to disappoint you. But Mom says that if I move in with you, then she'll have to move out of the house. Why? Because the atmosphere in here with my father would be unbearable. She says that he would blame her for letting me live with you and that she couldn't take it. Look, all my life, I've wanted my parents to live together. And now that they are, how can I do something that's guaranteed I'm to split sorry, them apart? I'm sorry, Marilyn, but right now I don't really care about your parents. We're the main event here, not them. I know that. You know something? Every time you've got to make a choice as to who to listen to, you'll listen to your mother, you'll listen to your father, anyone but me. Wait, I'm not doing that. No, I think you are. Look, getting married was our idea. It had nothing to do with your parents, but because they don't want us to, we postponed the marriage. That's not fair. Look, you've got to decide whether you want to live with me and whether you're in love with me. Wait, I love you. I do. How can you even question that? Mar Mary Lynn, you're just saying the words. Every time that you've got to do something, you back out of it. No, I am not backing out of anything. Wade Coleman, I love you more than I have ever loved you. And if you don't believe me, then I'll prove it. Mary Lynn, What's this wrong? doesn't prove anything to me. Wait, come on. We've waited long enough. Damn for it, this. don't you understand? I don't want to act like a couple of kids and run upstairs and do it every time your parents leave the house. Did I kiss you like a kid? No, but you kissed me out of desperation, and I don't want that. I want a commitment. Marriage and living together are the same thing to me. Wait, I'm trying to show you like, I'm just as committed as I'm you sorry. are. Like hell you are. Not if giving in to your parents if you do that and live with them instead of me. Wait, don't turn away from me! Marilyn. I want to make love to you. No, you don't. You just want to make everything all better. You can't. You made your choice. Wait! Well, it's not every day I get asked to lunch by the district attorney. No indictment forthcoming, I assure you. <laughs> I uh, asked you to meet me. Lee here. Halpern a... Sanders, you yes, look, yes. look gorgeous. Isn't she look gorgeous, Herb? How you doing? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, are you all right? Oh, I'm doing just great. I'm gorgeous. The whole world is gorgeous today. I am getting married. Today? No, not today. Today I just put the ring on Tina's finger and we agreed the big event is going to take place next Friday. Oh, congratulations. Could Thank be you. Tina's finally found someone who can keep up with her. I'll do my best. <laughs> well, I'm really amazed. I don't think anyone would be able to get you to the altar. So, Tina must be uh, very special. Oh, that she is. Well, listen, Max, can, mm -hmm. can, can I give you a word of advice as, as, as an old friend here? Mm-hmm. Okay. If Tina really is this special, then... Uh, I wouldn't let her go. How yes. about a little champagne and a toast? Oh, thanks, but I gotta take a rain check. I've got to go find my bride to be. Oh, boy, not even hitched, and already she's putting him through his paces. Oh, isn't it terrible? <laughs> Bye. Bye. You say it's um, none of my business, but do I detect a hint of wistfulness? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh... Max and I were involved at one time, but uh, oh. it's all right. It worked out for the best. He's very happy. I'm really happy for him. But let's not talk about that. Why don't you tell me why you asked me here for lunch? Dry stuff after that. <sighs> well, my, my office, in association with the state attorney general's office, is setting up a new agency. Mm -hmm. The goal is to over, oversee the placement of women parolees in, in job programs. Oh. Now, when they asked for a name to head the agency, your name was at the top of the list. Buddy, are you positive? Oh, yes, sir. Some salesman she knows says he's going to be riding on the stagecoach with Miss Ginny. You better hurry, Clint. You're right about that. I'm on my way. Oh, and Clint, hurry up, because the minute she checks out of her hotel, she's on her way to St. Louis. Oh. Oh. Oh! I'll teach you to try to make a fool out of my father. Wait, 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 son. Wait. Don't go anywhere. No, 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 no. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> Good lad. Who is your father? Mayor McGillis. Oh. Well, you thought I was trying to fool him. Well, you were right. I'm afraid your friend Clint has taught me a lesson I'll never forget. If you'll go back to the hotel room with me, 
I'll get the deed to the land, and you can give it to your father, and he can, he can give it to the rightful railway owner. All right? Good lad. <laughs> Time machine. McDonald's presents... Mm. Great news, Fraggles! Greater than a one Fraggle ping pong game? Greater than laundry? Tell me, Gobo. No, let me guess. No, tell me! Ah! It says... Kids get one of four Fraggle Rock toys when their parents buy them a McDonald's Happy Meal featuring Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock. There's Red Fraggle in a radish, Gobo in a carrot, Moki in an eggplant, or Boober and Wembley in a pickle. I think I'll...